The BMW 335i is an amazing car. It looks timeless, tuning potential is through the roof, and the aftermarket support is endless. The best part? Well, you can get them for a steal, at least for now. But if there's one thing I learned after owning a second 335i equipped with an N54 engine is that maintenance is key. I'll repeat that again. Maintenance is key, especially if you're looking to tune the car and get the most out of it. The minute you extract more power out of the engine, all the weak points start to fail. Trust me, I know. I experienced it when I added upgraded turbos to my E93. And funny enough, something similar happened to my E90 in the dyno recently where both the high pressure fuel pump and low pressure fuel pump took a dump back to back. Today my car gets prepped for a bottom mount single turbo kit from Doc Race. I learned my lesson this time around and all the maintenance will be taken care of before we shoot for 700 horsepower. What I'm gonna do is pretty much quickly go over every little part here. For those of you guys that don't wanna watch the whole video, I'm actually doing an engine out service on the E93 35i today. Uh, thanks to the guys here at Precision Sport Industries, which is a local performance and maintenance shops. They specialize in BMW and Porsche. If you guys need your BMWs worked on, make sure to hit these people up and know what they're doing. It's the only people I trust in the Central Florida area to work on my cars. I did an engine out service on my E93 335i that I used to own. And that was a super successful thing because after we went ahead and did that, uh, you know, with the guys here at PSI, I didn't get an engine code, engine light, any faults for like eight months, which had to be an absolute record because, you know, before that, I, I've owned the car for like six years uh, and every, every month I had something going on. So once they uh, dropped the engine and they replaced a lot of the weak points that normally fill on N54, I was good to go. Even after I was pushing 550 wheel horsepower, no issues super reliable so we're actually going to do the same thing to the e90 today for those of you guys that are not interested in seeing the whole video and you just want to see what parts you need to replace to make the car reliable well i'll quickly do that but i'll go more into depth about each part and explain why they commonly fail um, as we're installing all these parts onto the car and no surprise we have the gaskets bmws love to leak especially the n54 especially the n55 we have here the valve cover gasket I also recommend that you change your valve cover while you're at it. I don't have mine yet, but once it gets here, I'll do that as well. But yeah, valve cover gasket. Then we have, which is probably one of the most important gaskets to change, is the oil filter housing casket. Because if you don't do that, oil can leak onto the belts, belt can shred, goes into the motor, and uh, yeah, f your life. We got some uh, O-rings here for the intake manifold. I'm not sure why. I got doubles of it, but yeah. Since the engine's gonna be out anyways, we got the throttle housing seal. A very big maintenance thing on N54. A lot of people choose not to do it because of the amount of maintenance that goes into accessing the oil pan. Oil pan gasket, very important. Guys, do it. If you got a high mileage BMW, you're leaking. Even if it's just a little bit, just do it. Moving on to the injectors. You know, BMW has been through so many revisions with their uh, fuel injectors. Um, these are Index 12s, which are the latest one. A lot of the times, if you have an N55, N54, they're running old injectors. I know my E93, we're running like Index 12s and Index 9s. Uh, so I swapped them out to Index 12s, and the car ran a lot better. These are super, super pricey, but so worth it. Um, these are responsible for a lot of misfiring, you know, leaky injectors and stuff like that. It's just, there's a lot that can go wrong with it. Replace these good peace of mind at no surprise here to most people we have the water pump here and what makes this so special it's an electric water pump unlike most you know cars out there it has a lot of benefits to it being electric especially when you have to bleed the system but the only thing is that they you know fail prematurely 50 70 000 miles that's it that's how long they last based on my experience and a lot of my friends that own these cars 50 to 70 thousand miles is when they go bad if you're going to tune your car if you're going to add upgraded turbos go single turbo whatever this is like a must this is a must because it'll probably be one of the first things to go this and the high pressure fuel pump changing the water pump then you kind of have to do this one which is the thermostat which they typically fail at the same time so thermostat water pump got to do both these two are common maintenance items for these cars as well coil packs spark plugs if you ever have any any misfires you always want to start from like i guess from cheapest to expensive just kind of follow the i don't know process of elimination from less money to more money so spark plugs first if you're ever doing the spark plugs i mean you might as well just do the coil so you know you change both of them at, both of them at the same time also um if you're ever going to tune your car which i know a lot of you guys are um this is a must even if you know even if they're somewhat new like 10,000 miles or whatever replace them because when you tune your car pretty much the engine eats through this much faster like 
I guess when you don't have a tuned car, they can last 30,000 miles or so, or 40,000 miles, whatever it is. When you have a tuned car, like you're probably gonna have to replace it every 10 to 15,000 miles. So I decided to go with Elder coils. That's what BMW uses now. I've, I've used uh, Delphi coils in the past on the E93, they were fine. Bosch coils, um, I mean, you could, they're cheaper, but Elder coils is where it's at. Um, word of advice, just buy the ones that say Elder coils, not BMW, it's the same shit just doesn't have the BMW brand in, you save like more than 50%. This depends on your situation. If you don't have a tuned car, then you can just get OEM Bosch plugs. If you're gonna tune your car, you get uh, one step colder. And if you're gonna really, really tune your car, add a single turbo and go like for big power, I guess like over 600 wheel, then two step colder, which is what I ended up getting. Arguably the most uh, uh, fragile thing on the N54 is the high pressure fuel pump. Um, BMW even had a recall for them years ago when these cars first came out. Um, I had a new one but it's already on the E90 because we took the car to the dyno and it pretty much wet the bed. High pressure fuel pump already gave up. So I'll, I'll talk about it later on today since we'll be able to see it, but we don't have to install it because we already installed it. Also have a 3.5 uh, bar map sensor. Not something that you guys are gonna need unless you're really tuning your car, um, like adding a lot of power. We're doing that for custom tuning. And then the, here's the harness that goes along with it. These are actually not all the parts I'm gonna be installing onto the car while the engine is out. Um, there's a lot more stuff. I have like, I don't know, like $2,500 worth of fuel upgrades from Fuelit. Uh, I got a single turbo kit that should be arriving tomorrow. It's Doc's Ray's uh, new bottom mount single turbo kit, which I can't wait to show you guys. It looks super pretty, but we're probably gonna be splitting this video into like two or three parts. So the first one will just focus all on maintenance because you know, maintenance first before performance. Then we'll focus on the turbocharger and then the third part would probably be just me driving it for the first time. And if you're wondering where did I get all my maintenance parts from, got it from FCP Euro. Um, I've been shopping with these guys for God knows how long just because of the, the awesome lifetime warranty they offer on all of these parts. I mean, guys, spark plugs, coils, which you're gonna burn through if you're tuning your car, lifetime warranty. Like literally no questions asked, you just, buy another set return your old ones you're good to go injectors same thing gaskets same thing you literally never have to pay for any of these parts ever again if you shop through fcp euro like i've yet to find a site that offers something so good a perk so good like those guys over there lifetime warranty on water pumps injectors high pressure fuel pump spark plugs even brake rotors and brake pads imagine that guys there's no catch so if you guys need any of the parts that i'm talking about here in the video make sure and check out fcpeuro.com i will leave a link down in the description to their website so you guys can check it out pretty much any bmw you own they sell parts for pretty much everything and word of advice guys a lot of these parts right here you notice they're not the bmw branded ones that's because you can save so much more and a lot of the times these uh third party companies are the oem manufacturers for these parts anyway so you can save like sometimes like 70 percent off versus the bmw stuff and it's equally as good so like the gasket for the valve cover the oil pan especially things like the coil packs guys elder coils the same ones as bmw brand for like half the cost you get the same product you just don't get the bmw you know logo at the front doesn't matter get the elder coils you save a lot more money you get the same product lifetime warranty you can't beat it the okay. reason i do not have the valve cover yet is because i didn't want to buy another plastic one i want to go uh flashy with okay. the with the billet one i'm okay with it since it's a bottom mount if it was a top mount i would have made you buy it like asap why because it would crack immediately no because I will have to take off your turbo to install it. But yeah, for those of you guys who have been around the channel for a while, you're very familiar with this process. We did it with the E93. We're gonna do it again with the E90, but more so I'm gonna go into detail with all the parts we're installing. So I'll try to make it more informative and we'll try to um, this time estimate a price for you guys, um, labor wise. I'll talk to the owner here and try to get you guys an estimate. So that way you guys don't blow me up. Also, if you're interested in getting any of these performance mods, you can actually buy them on my website, vehiclevirals.com. I'll leave a link down in the description below to all the bolt-ons in the car, pretty much everything that's going to receive. By the way, if you're interested in seeing some of the previous E93 35i videos, I'll have a link to the entire playlist down in the description below. In previous episodes, we were able to install some budget performance mods onto the car along with a conservative tune from a mobile app. We took the car to the dyno and it made 462 wheel horsepower and 500 torque, which is absolutely insane for stock turbos. While we are mainly focusing on maintenance when it comes to engine components, it's always a good idea to look over the suspension as well, especially if the car's in a lift. No point in having a healthy, reliable engine that can produce insane horsepower if the suspension is out of whack and the car rides like crap. 
After just a few minutes under the car, it was pretty clear that I would need some new control arms and preload on my coilovers needed to be readjusted. Something I definitely have to take care of very soon. New bushings, arms, ball joints, and solid coilover shocks all make a huge difference when it comes to the driving performance. Cooling lines, which I didn't talk about earlier, are common weak points on the 335i as well. Excessive heat created by the N54 engine just doesn't treat plastic or rubber parts very well. For example, this expansion tank hose that I commonly call the McDonald's straw on other videos seems to break the minute you touch it, especially if it's old. The center is made out of this hard plastic material that seems like it's built to break. So next time you're working on your car and you need to remove that hose, be gentle with it or have a replacement ready. The same thing goes for the operator hose. I remember removing it on the E93 and it snapped immediately. The operator hose? Yeah. Did my last one break? It did, didn't it? Oh, oh, that one's a good one. That was a good shape. The other one was crusty, the one on the E93. This one's a good shape, bro. Oh, yeah, and if you're ever going to put coolant in your car, make sure it's BMW blue. Don't get the Mountain Dew. Like he had on his E36. You had the Al Mountain Dew on your E36. We're here, guys. This is it. BMW and blue coolant anti-freeze. This is it. This is all I use for coolant right here. FCP Euro. The only thing is they don't have lifetime warranty on this. You use it up, you use it up. Yeah, so when you're disassembling, this one normally cracks right away. See these plastic house, uh, housings or whatever you want to call them? They normally snap right away when you take them off. Same with that McDonald's straw, but I got lucky. Yeah, this has never been on. Off. I heard a snap. <laughs> oh, it's definitely broken. Let's see. Yeah, we'll just uh, get your operator home just in case. <laughs> By the way, this is another maintenance mod you might want to buy. Mine just didn't get here in time. This failed on my E93 after I uh, upgraded the turbos. And essentially, I got stranded and I had to get that towed. I had to get the car towed. Yeah, alternators and uh, another thing that, that fails on these cars. Not as common, but they do. Just because I want to show you guys the type of comments that I get. This one actually got flagged. You're a dumbass. Could have probably bought a Ferrari by now, but stick with your piece of shit. 335. What else do I have? Guarantee. This dumbass is doing headers and exhaust. <laughs> okay, what are you supposed to do? <coughs> not headers, not exhaust? You sound like a bitch. Just drive your car. Have fun. You are a paranoid drama queen and or stupid. This was such an obvious thing that you had to think about considering how picky and special you are. Single turbo that bitch. Why the f does this keep coming up on my subscriptions? Why would anyone subscribe to this bird? Damn, you got some ugly ass fingers. F***ing kids. If you can't get a 7, then don't buy a Beamer. Been driving 7 since 2001. Thumb in my nose at you peasants and lesser BMW drivers. Love cutting y'all asses off on the road to flex that... To flex that badge on you. Uh, you mean the broken badge? <laughs> Because that's what 7 Series is. It's broken. You're, you're a peasant because you drive an E36, not a, uh, a 7 Series. Yeah. And you drive a 335, not a 7 Series. Yeah, so I'm a peasant too. Yeah. Oh, by the way, everybody that subscribed to my channel, you guys are all peasants. Yeah, I guess. And mine too. <laughs> you guys are all peasants as my well. My M5 F10, it, it's, a, it's a peasant. It's not a 7 Series. Yeah, exactly. Even though the sticker price is more than a 7 Series. <laughs> Weird, huh? So yeah, if you guys ever want to become YouTube creators, content creators, those are the type of comments you get. Like... All the time I get them all the time hey back when I first started my channel I used to somewhat get to me I, I felt inclined to reply to all of them now I just kind of laugh at them and uh, I make fun of them with my friends family my wife you guys are just adding entertainment to my life so keep commenting away what I'm lucky because of what so you have MSD 81 so you have the newer DME that means we can tune the shit out of this that means you won't have an issue with your MOSFETs like MSD 80 I think your E93 has that yes it does but you never had DME issues yeah sweet oh by the way we are replacing the radiator as well with a csf one that should be arriving in two days this car is getting all the upgrades before we make the power it's the way to do it just a few more things needed to be unbolted before we drop the motor like some suspension pieces exhaust system sensors and of course the transmission and subframe remember guys you don't necessarily need to drop the engine to get all the maintenance done that we're going to be doing to the e90 today but it sure is a lot easier especially when a single turbo kit will be installed anyways this table has seen way too many n54s <laughs> <laughs> Like I said earlier in the video, if uh, you guys need to get a similar job done, Precision Sport Industries here in the Central Florida area, Oviedo, Florida, this guy can do this for you. That way you don't have to do it yourself.
Yes. Ta-da! Big. Down there. La beast. So this is what the N54 looks like when it's outside of the car. Pretty, isn't it? It's about to look really pretty once we start, uh, you know, swapping out all the uh, all the fragile parts. Nice. By the way, I don't need this anymore. I got another one coming in. For yeah. sale. I'm sure one of you guys have a cracked intake manifold. Either that or this cracked nipple. The cracked nipple, yeah. What do they go for? I don't know. Uh, just shoot two hundred dollars. Two hundred dollars. All right, two hundred dollars. Okay. Dude, that's expensive for plastic. That's the most expensive plastic you ever buy. Actually, the valve cover costs what? Five hundred? Four something. Yeah, there you go. Four hundred and fifty dollar plastic. This right here is a notorious high pressure fuel pump that I told you guys about. Responsible for injecting fuel into the engine. It gets fuel over to the injectors, which the engine needs for combustion. If your 335i ever experiences long crank times, drivetrain malfunction, or the car shakes while you're driving, well, you might need a new one of these. Honestly, I don't know the real reason to why they fail. I think they were just poorly designed mechanically. Like I said, the one on my car failed on the dyno, so we went ahead and installed a new one. You know what I'm really surprised at? I think they already changed it before. The old filter housing gasket? Yeah, I mean, it's not leaking like out of every single hole like most N54s. Like, oh. yeah. This is the one thing that seems like every N54 owner tends to ignore. They don't do the oil filter housing gasket. And then it sucks up the belt. Yeah, and then it sucks up the belt. And then, you know, Kaboom. you can lose the engine or if you're lucky, you're probably not going to be lucky. Oil filter housing gasket, one of the most important gaskets you guys need to take care of immediately guys comes with a roach? cockroach bro he's cr oh <laughs> you got pretty toasty this engine gets hot <laughs> you know you didn't last a second <laughs> it's like no it's an n54 it's the worst engine to fall into in the previous video we also did the clutch on the transmission so twin disc dkm holds up to 780 torque which is insane i i, I do have a video on that if you guys want to see it if you're ever you know planning to uh, get big power for an N54, N55, or pretty much any car. Twin disc is a must. So you can check out that video. Link down in the description below. Right next to the high pressure fuel pump is a low pressure sensor, which is normally needs to be replaced as well. In fact, back when BMW issued the recall for the high pressure fuel pump, they would replace the low pressure sensor as well as a courtesy. New plugs and codes were previously installed at the dyno as well since the car was experiencing misfires. NGK Step 2 colder plugs and elder coils. If you're ever experiencing misfires with your car, this is normally a good place to start. They don't cost as much as the other possibilities and it's always just a good idea to have fresh ones installed for better gas mileage and consistency and power just be prepared to replace them more frequently on a tuned car for Look sure at that valve covers leaking guys told you man it always fails actually the oil pan gasket is leaking the valve cover gasket is leaking and the oil i don't i don't think about the oil filter housing gasket that wasn't leaking but typically those, those, those are the three that leak when you got a high mileage n54 and then we're gonna go we're gonna see if these turbos are toast later on when we take them off these were actually replaced like 30,000 miles ago by bmw uh the owner had extended warranty so they replaced those at no charge to him i know what they're capable of oh well, they are there yeah if you guys didn't watch that dyno video i mean 470 horsepower and 500 torque that's a lot of power for uh stock turbos you smell that i smell that uh corn you like the smell of corn mm -hmm. i like the smell of corn too we're gonna be running E85 and 93 on this car. So I'll have the choice. Any reputable brands that wanna sponsor me with a billet valve cover, I'd gladly take it and shout you guys out and make a video off of it. I haven't bought one because goddamn they're expensive. So I'm gonna rock this plastic one for now, which is probably a terrible idea because it's probably cracked or warped somewhere. So right here, these are the Elder Coils guys. This is what I recommend. If you guys are getting any misfires, you're tuning or anything like that, Elder Coils, way to go. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. I didn't even loosen this. It was already loose? This was loose. So, BMW installed these turbos a couple of thousand miles ago, and they didn't tighten it all the way. Oh, <laughs> gotta love BMW dealerships. We probably would have made more power at the dyno. Had a slight boost leak going on over here because of it. Didn't really throw a 30 FF, so I don't think it was that major of a boost leak. Yeah. But it was tight in the halfway, so that's sick. He's telling me that he was gonna pull it off and it's gonna be broken. That same exact holes we pulled it on the E93 and it broke immediately. That's another maintenance item you need if you, if you ever decide to take it off. Let's see if we're proven right. 
Oh god, that crust. <laughs> Here you go. Here's half of it. They came out. They came out in pieces. There's one. Here's the rest of the hose. Yeah. What's the name of that hose? Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse. The Mickey Mouse hose, guys. Or thermostat to the cylinder head is what they call it. Thermostat to cylinder head. That hose. If you ever decide to remove it, or if you're doing an engine out service, that is a must. So a somewhat bulletproof fix for this hose is a billet fit in from rain. All you gotta do is remove the plastic end from the original hose and fit this one and you'll worry less about it failing. If I remember correctly, it only costs $20 and can be purchased through FCP Euro. So I did ask the owner here at PSI, cause I know you guys are gonna bombard me with questions about the pricing of an engine out service and stuff like that. You see, I'm partners with them so I don't really pay what you guys would be paying. Sometimes I don't even pay at all. So. If you guys wanted to get a similar service done here at PSI, it's anywhere between $2,000 to $2,500 in labor alone. And that's not including if you decide to upgrade your turbos, then the price can be higher than that because it gets a lot, a, a lot more tedious. But if you wanted to do just engine out service, refresh a lot of the weak components and stuff like that, like some of the stuff that I'm doing today, it'd be $2,000 to $2,500 in labor plus whatever parts you get installed onto the car, so. But if you guys wanna know more details, um, cause everybody's price will be different depending on what they want, then reach out to Precision Sport Industries. I'll leave their email down in the description below. I'll leave their Instagram there as well if you wanna DM them. Um, but yeah, that's a ballpark price for you guys. So don't ask me, that's all I know. Giggity! Since we already have the N54 out, let's go ahead and put it in the E30. You forgot one thing. I forgot because I asked you what I needed. Well, I forgot your car had f***ing faults for this. Remember? I had a check engine light. Yeah. And then it went away, but I know it's there. What was it for? Oh, two sensors. It's on the house? <laughs> I don't know about that one. <laughs> now we take off water pump, then we take water pipe off, then we take turbo off. Mm-hmm. Uh... And there you have it. Water pump, thermostat. Water pump, thermostat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, in part two to this video, we'll show you exactly how the single turbo kit gets installed onto the car. Uh, we're doing an unboxing. I actually have the, the whole kit at my house. I have to bring it here tomorrow. So I'll show you guys all that in the next video. So make sure to subscribe with the notification bell on. That way you don't miss out on that video. If I'm not mistaken, I think I'm going to be the very first person with a dock race bottom mount single turbo kit. So this is the only place you're going to catch the video before anybody else gets it. So stay tuned. So all we're doing right now is just cleaning up the engine as best as we can before we install all the maintenance parts. Uh, after that, we're going to call it a day. It's getting dark outside already. Well, it's already dark outside. So we'll continue tomorrow. So it's another day. We're back here at PSI Orlando. Something just arrived today that I want to show you guys a sneak peek of. That's right, guys. The single turbo kit for the E90. But I'm not going to be showing any of this stuff on this video. So if you guys want to see like an unboxing video and the install, you're going to have to subscribe with the notification bell on. Yeah. Here, I'll show you guys a little bit though. And all the good stuff is underneath. So you're not really seeing anything. Moving on to the oil pan gasket. So you guys know I spend a lot of time hanging out with the guys here at the shop. Well, I get to see a lot of BMWs and a lot of N54s. Almost every single one of them have oil leaks coming from the oil pan because of a failing gasket. People just don't want to pay to get it addressed because there's quite a bit of labor involved to do the job, meaning shops can charge you quite a bit. There's nothing really wrong with them per se, but rubber in general just doesn't do well over time, so they need to be replaced eventually. Also, if you're going to attempt the DIY for the oil pan gasket, make sure to get new bolts. Depending on how bad the leak is, you may have to continue topping off the car with oil, which can get pretty annoying. I would say the previous owner never changed the oil. Yeah, so if it blows, we know why. <laughs> I mean, the car was able to make good power at the dyno, so I don't think it's bad or too bad. Ooh, it's crispy, all right. Actually, it's much, it's more rubbery than the one on the E93. I honestly don't understand why I get so many messages on Instagram telling me if I did the rod bearings on the N54. It's not a common problem on these engines, guys. We're about to check it right now, but it's not a common issue. Do you want to do it? Do what? Rod bearings? No. Just to make people happy? No. Why not? Until I started getting those messages, I've never heard of rod bearing issues on the N54. Just like change your oil regularly, use quality oil, that's it. Don't, don't be scaring me, sir. That's just piece of 
oil piece pan. of residue. Well, that's a piece of oil pan. Are you looking for metal parts? And in case you guys are wondering how many miles on this N54, if I haven't said it already, it's 140,000 miles. So. Um, I'm sure the gasket was probably done at one point, but it's definitely been a while. And then we'll see what the valve cover gasket looks like as well. That way you guys get an idea if you guys have a similar mileage N54. I guess this is what you can expect. I feel like a lot of this stuff has been replaced though because on the E93 I only had 80,000 miles and the gaskets looked a lot worse. Oil filter house gasket was really bad. Valve cover one was replaced twice and oil pan one was crunchy. Oh my god. You know they haven't changed that oil filter neither. <laughs> oh my god. Guys, oil changes man. It's very important. So much easier to install when the engine's out. So much easier. Faster. Much faster. And the thing is that you can get to all the other maintenance parts. That's the good thing about doing an engine out service. If you were to tackle this individually, let's say you were to take it to a dealer to get the valve cover, then you wait, and you take it to do the oil pan, then you wait. It'll end up being more expensive than just paying the engine out service two to two uh, two to twenty five hundred dollars. You get all of it done at once. It's much better that way. If you know there's several things wrong with your car, maintenance wise. Why just do one thing at a time? Just save up the money and do all of it at once. And it's just gonna be a better deal that way. Here's another maintenance thing you could do. You can clean these uh, ven uh, veno solenoids if you get any misfires or rough idling or anything like that. I did it on the E93 and it fixed a lot of the issues that I had. Um, these are pretty expensive. They're like $250 each or you can just get $2 brake cleaner and just clean it yourself. I actually have a video on this uh, on a DIY. If you guys are interested, I'll leave it down uh, in the description below. I'll leave a link there. And if it doesn't fix it, then you need new ones which is $250 each. The oil filter housing gasket is by far, at least in my opinion, the most important one out of the bunch. There are actually two of them. Slacking on these can ruin your engine, like seriously. And the last main gasket that was left to be addressed is the one located at the valve cover. This one could be a bit of a tricky one because it could be the gasket or it could be the valve cover itself because it's made out of plastic or it could just be both. Not only can having a leak from your gasket make a mess on the side of your engine, but it can also cause your exhaust to smoke as well as drench your spark plugs leading to misfires and inconsistent pockets. Power. Oh, and yeah, poor fuel economy, if anybody cares. This one isn't too hard to DIY, but you gotta make sure you take your time installing the gasket correctly and making sure the valve cover sits flush when installed. When it comes to injectors, pretty simple. Just get Index 12 injectors if you're serious about making power. Mixed and old injectors can be inconsistent, which may not be a big deal with stock level power. But I can assure you that the minute you crank up the boost, weak injectors are one of the first ones to cause issues. Symptoms include a lot of what I mentioned with the high pressure fuel pump since they both work hand in hand. And I don't know, there's not really any way you can tell they're bad, but who cares? I already got Index 12s to replace them with. Don't put RTV on your valve cover. Mm -hmm. Doesn't help. Also, don't pinch it when you install it. That. It's a totally different story. It happened to me. Yep. It wasn't me. No, it wasn't these guys. But these do tend to come out when you're installing them. Especially in the car. That's why it's eight hour job. So you look at every corner. Make sure every corner is good. Here we go. Pizza, pizza. There you go. Installed. All right guys, so we're not gonna be installing the thermostat or the water pump onto the engine because uh, Ali's gonna have to install some of the turbo kit onto the engine to make sure we get proper fitment. So you guys see this in the turbo install video. So that's gonna conclude today's video guys. Uh, make sure to subscribe with the notification bell on. That way you don't miss out the turbo kit unboxing and also the turbo kit install onto the engine. Subscribe, notification. Like the video if you guys enjoyed it. Take care.